lasting memory of the British Touring Car Championship 1988 was Rouse against Sofa. Whether it was Brand, Silverstone, Thruxton, or here at Donington, the battles were epic, with Rouse emerging victorious, but not as champion. That title went to Frank Sittner and the ProDrive team, beaten only once in the BMW in Class B. 1989, in the SO British Touring Car Championship, promises to be the best ever. And nervous fingers hit the starter buttons. Alton Park, round one. Especially tense, Andy Rouse, the great engineer driver, despite confidently placing his Ford Sierra RS500 on pole position, he knows that behind him, no Steve Sofa, but a packed Class A entry, this season better prepared to present a really strong challenge. There's Rob Gravid alongside him, with an engine prepared by the Australian touring car master Dick Johnson. There's Chris Hodgetts, the former champion, on road two, who showed he was close to matching Rouse's pace at the end of last season. There's big money backing and a Rouse prepared car for the experienced Tim Harvey. And heading Class B, Britain's James Weaver, a proven race winner on both sides of the Atlantic. In all, 32 starters, but the spectacle and the glory this season is in Class A. No less than 17 Ford Sierras, but does anyone have a car to match Rouse, who qualified almost a second and a half quicker than Rob Gravitt? Further down the grid, Mike Smith, making his return to racing, is on the sixth row. James Weaver at the BMW on the seventh row, ahead of Frank Sidner. The target for Rouse, realistically, Class A success, because remember, a win in any of the lower, less competitive classes carries an equal number of overall championship points. There's one or two fairly weak classes there where one particular driver is going to have a fairly easy time to pick up easy points, whereas I'm going to have to work very hard to gain those, those points. So uh, we're not too optimistic about the championship, but we are optimistic about a really good season's racing. Rob Gravitt, alongside Rouse, is part of the new Trackstar team, which he's set up with Mike Smith. Mike just happy to be back for his first race since his helicopter crash, but what kind of physical problem will he face? Stamina is the problem. I've not had any chance to do any aerobic exercise, which I'm told I should have done. But you can't, you know, if your ankle won't move, you can't do it. it it's going to take until early summer that I'm walking without a limp. And uh, I'm gradually getting back into things, two hours physiotherapy a day. I'll be fit, I'll be fine, you know, my head's in the right place. Before we join Murray Walker, a word about the other change for the new season. It's a rolling start, the field building up pace for an explosion of power across the start line. For the champion Frank Sidner in the body of the pack, that's not a great prospect. I must say, I, I question whether it's a good idea here at Alton Park because Old Hall comes up very quickly indeed. Instead of arriving at Old Hall at about 60 or 70 miles an hour, we'll be arriving at Old Hall at about 120 miles an hour. So uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know, reserve judgment. Well, we soon will see, because now they're on their way to the first rolling start of the SO British Touring Car Championship. Over the line, away they go, into Old Hall Corner. And it's Andy Rouse leading, Gravit in second position. Chris Hodgins and Harvey is in fourth place. Now we're in car with Mike Smith in the Ford Sierra Cosm, straight into the back of Graham Good Sierra. That's a real thump. And that's the rear bumper missing off Good's car as two string through ahead of Mike Smith. On the Cascades, the left-hander. Up towards Lakeside and onto the hairpin at Shell. And at Shell, second gear, 50 miles an hour they go into that. Rouse is leading. Hodges is in third position. Gravity is sandwiched in between them. Out of Shell. Tim Harvey is in fourth place. Guy Edwards is in fifth, Varys Newman in sixth position, and Graham Good is already retiring from the first race of the year. So, Clay Hill now, fifth gear, 130 miles an hour, Rouse, Gravit, Hodgins, Harvey, there's very little in it. Up towards Druids, a very tight right-hander, third gear, 80 miles an hour. There's Rouse, Gravit, Hodgins, and Harvey in the blue Sierra is starting to close on Chris Hodgins in the red one. On to Lodge. Second gear, 60 miles an hour. 2,000 horsepower from the first four Ford Sierra Cosmos. Into Deer Leap. Fourth gear, 120 miles an hour. Rouse, Gravit, Hodgins, Harvey. And at the end of the lap, they're doing 135 miles an hour into Old Hall. There's Harvey. Down 
Alexander Cascades. Gravid in second place, Hodgetts in third position. Harvey still holding fourth place. And away they go. And in car with Jerry Marnie now, taking seventh place from the Dutchman, Gerrit van Cowen. And Gerrit's running on unleaded fuel, by the way. Shell corner, Jerry Marnie, seventh place. Van Cowen behind him, eighth. Jones, ninth. Mike Smith and then the two BMWs, and now we're in car with Frank Sidner, the 1988 British champion. Ahead of him, his ebullient teammate, James Weaver, through the Forston chicane, 60 miles an hour. And a grim-looking Graham Good stomps down the pit lane, no doubt, to complain. So let's look at it again from Mike Smith's point of view. He approaches the start line in grid order. The first corner, Old Hall, ahead of him now, the right-hander. Closing up on Graham Good, Black, Ford, Sierra, Cosworth. As they tuck into the apex. Zap! Straight into the back. And there's going to be ructions about that. Graham is not at all happy. Graham, what was the problem, Rod? Tell what happened. Mike Bloody Smith just gave me such a bang up the rear. I can't believe that. It's the second time he's done it. I just can't believe it. The first corner, there was a Labatt's car in front. Admittedly, he was, he was going a bit rather slowly, but even so, Mike just gave me such a smack up the arse. I couldn't believe it. And he's broke all of his suspension. Well, infuriating for poor Graham, but I'd call it a racing accident. And in the midfield, Clark, Hall and James Kay, all in BMW M3s, fighting for third place in their class. Whilst ahead of them in the two white BMWs at Old Hall, sports car ace James Weaver still leads British champion Frank Sittner. It looks like Frank's got his hands full. Down to Cascades at 130 miles an hour. Weaver ahead of him. And ahead of Weaver is Carl Jones. And meantime, number 56, John Cleland's Vauxhall Astra is leading Class C. And to nobody's surprise, it's number 70, Phil Dowsett's Toyota leading Class D. More about them later. Lodge corner, and still the imperturbable Andy Rouse leads. But he's getting no peace at all from Rob Gravitt and Chris Hodgetts. First, second and third, out of Deer Leap at 120 miles an hour. Over the start line at 135 miles an hour. Rouse drifts wide at 85 at Old Hall Corner, then Gravitt, then Hodgetts. And it's really interesting up front with number 21, Rob Gravitt Sierra, built by Australian champion Dick Johnson in Queensland for Gravitt and Mike Smith's brand new track star team. In car with Mike Smith. Carl Jones ahead in ninth place and he goes off. Carl Jones goes off, buck all over Mike's windscreen. Watch the air pressure clearing it off. Get the wipers on, into Cascades, there's Mike, Sean Walker, Carl Jones, and Weaver and Sittner, 12th and 13th in the BMWs, and Ganey. And now, in car with a new slimline, Jerry Marnie, second in the British Championship in 1988, goes past fifth place Mike Newman, does he? Yes, he does. Goes through on the inside, Jerry Marnie goes up to fifth, and that battered Sierra's Mike Smith's. Down to Lodge Corner, Barney, then Newman, then the Dutchman, Gerrit Van Cowen, back to saloon car racing, in car with Jerry Marnie, up to fourth, 120 miles an hour, fifth gear, 130 miles an hour, over the line, and Jerry Marnie is pulling away. And now Carl Jones is cramming on the speed, look at him, number 28 going through inside Mike Smith, down to Cascades, and Sean Walker's attacking on the right, he goes through. I suspect that Mike Smith is getting tired. He is still recovering from that very bad helicopter crash he had last year. And James Weaver is right up with Smith. Number 21, Rob Gravitz, approaching Shell. Second, look for Rouse in front of him. There he is. There's Gravitz. Third is Chris Hodgetts in the red car. And the blue Sierra's Lawrence Bristow back after a stop. 
So now, up Clay Hill, into Druids. Number one, Andy Rouse, lapping the BMW, leads. Rob Gravitt in second position. And it is beginning to look like Andy Rouse's race. He dominated things last year, and he's doing it again. Into Lodge. Dear lead. Drift wide. Change up. Over the line, another lap completed. Andy is easing away. Old Hall's corner. Gravitt second, Hodgins third. Bristow behind has been lapped. It's looking like 1988 again. Andy Rouse there won nine out of 12 rounds last year. He's leading by two seconds. Not much, but it's enough. And back at Lodge, it's Newman, Van Cowan, Jones, Walker, Smith, Weaver. There's Weaver in the background behind Mike Smith. Weaver chasing Mike Smith towards Sierra Hard. And that is Carl Jones, number 28 at Old Hall Corner. Squeal of tyres, he's off. Carl Jones pirouettes across the grass in the Ford. He's going to be perfectly OK, but he's lost his placing. And now Frank Sinner is fighting Graham Hathaway in the yellow Ford Sierra for 13th place. Hathaway goes through on the inside. Sintner takes it back. No, he doesn't. Down to Cascades. That's ex rally cross British champion Graham Hathaway pitting 500 Cosworth horsepower against 320 Munich horses. And Frank's right up his boot lid. Nick and Brooks, 130 miles an hour. Andy Rouse leads. Grab it second. is in a beautifully smooth groove. There's Hathaway and Sittner fighting it out behind. And gritty British champion Frank Sittner goes into Falston's but well behind James Weaver's class-leading BMW. Now you see why they're so good. Hathaway, Sittner. Absolutely on the ragged edge. And there's Robin Donovan's Ford Sierra Cosworth sandwich between two BMWs. Being close, he's going to be taken. No, he's not. Turbo's blown. Robin, tu Robin Donovan's turbo blows. And into the pits comes Carl Jones. So, turbo problems for Donovan. Turbo problems for Carl Jones. But there is no turbo problem for Rob Gravitt. Look at him. He has closed right up on race leader Andy Rouse. They go through first and second to complete another lap and lights the blaze. Chris Hodgins is hanging on to third. Two ex-British champions sandwiching Rob Gravitt in second position. Down to Cascades. Rouse. Gravitt. Out of the left-hander, they line it up for Shell by way of Island Bend. There's a couple of tail-enders ahead of them. Are they going to get in the way? There goes Chris Hodgetts. Here is Gravitt, almost attached to Rouse's Sierra. And what a debut for the track star team. Nicker Brook, lapping one, lapping two. Andy Rouse being forced every inch of the way by Rob Gravitt. Gravitt with a lot less experience, but he's giving Rouse a very hard time as Andy comes up to Druids at 80 miles an hour. Tucks in tight, lets it drift out, and he's off! Andy Rouse goes off, straight into the tire wall. That's a very big bump, but the door opens. Out gets Andy, thank heavens he's okay. But why? A mistake, a tire problem, something broke, oil on the track, who knows? But whatever, Andy Rouse is out. Look at it again. He just suddenly changes direction for no apparent reason at all, and that is a mystery. Now, here is Andy's view. There's a problem with the camera, but you can see out of Nickerbrook at 130 miles an hour. Change gear. Change again. And again, turn right. And off! Lost it on the grass, no friction there, straight into the tire wall. 
Well, Andy's got every reason to look dejected, but that tyre barrier worked and he's OK. While in the pits, a worried team are looking for the boss. Well, they won't see him. Because now, Rob Gravitt leads. There he is, his first race for the new Mike Smith, Rob Gravitt track star team. And in the other track star Sierra, Mike Smith's tiring. He's being passed by the very impressive James Weaver's BMW. So James is now ninth class leader and a new class lap record holder. Keeping ahead of Mike Smith in spite of the fact that he's got 180 horsepower less. Number 10, Guy Edwards is third now in the second Rouse team car behind Gravit and Hodgetts. Battling it out with the fourth place man, number 7, Tim Harvey. There he is. to Nicker Brook, Edwards in third position, Harvey in fourth place, up to Druids, and Guy Edwards is in his 24th year of racing, Formula One, twice winner of Alton's Gold Cup, and he's the man who pulled Nicky Lauda out of that blazing Ferrari in 1976, and he got a Queen's gallantry medal for that, Tim Harvey behind him, his ninth year of racing, Carts, Formula Ford, sports, saloons, he's driven them all, and he's in fourth position here. 17 Ford Sierra turbocharged Cosworth cars started this race and they are really dominating things at the front and of course in class A. And number 21, Rob Gravitt hasn't got far to go now. If he can hang on, it's going to be a great win for him ahead of Chris Hodgins and Guy Edwards. But Guy Edwards is touring. There's Guy, he's blown the engine. See the smoke pouring from the back, pulling off the course, out of the race. This is not the Rouse team's day. And it's not Chris Hodgett's day either, after all. He's limping. Slowed right down. He's got a right front puncture. And that's Mike O'Brien coming up to pass him. Mike's well down the field, though. So Chris Hodgins trying to get back to the pits to change that front wheel and tyre. On slowly onwards goes Chris Hodgins, and Micah Bryan loses it. And drive assured, it says on the side. Well, Mike, Micah Bryan regains the course. it's going to be 32-year-old Rob Gravitt's race all the way from Australia for his Sierra and victory first time out. A superb achievement. Well done, Rob. And there is James Weaver winning Class B in the white BMW M3. Maximum points in his class. And as Weaver tours in, an exhausted Mike Smith in the second Trackstar Sierra just beats the rejoined Chris Hodgetts to seventh place. Mike Smith comes in demonstrating the massive dent where he hit Graham Good. But he's finished the race. And there it is. Turbocharged Port Sierra Cosworth's first to fifth. Weaver's 2.3-litre non-turbo BMW sixth. And a very happy Rob Gravett. First time out in the boys. They've worked so hard the last two weeks. They've only just arrived, these cars from Australia. They've been working 48 hours in a row, no bed. It's amazing, I'm really pleased for them. What can I say? Great effort from Gravit, but class winners like John Cleland in Class C get the same championship points. Cleland gave a very impressive debut to the Vauxhall Dealer Sport 16 valve Astra GTE. Never headed in the class, he set a new lap record, and the Scotsman is already most people's tip for the overall championship title. Class D victory went to Jeff Kimber Smith in his Toyota Corolla GT. But that was only after the demise of Phil Dowsett, the man who dominated the class last season and came close to winning the championship himself. Dowsett struggling for finance and a late entry in his Toyota was leading the class very comfortably when he was forced out with a broken drive peg. 
Even then, Kimber Smith only just managed to take the points, forcing his car over the line on the starter motor after suffering a fuel problem on the very last bend. So drama among the lower classes, but not exactly the high drama, that already leaves the quickest man in the field off the pace in the championship contest. So the full result of the opening round and post-race analysis put Rouse's problem down to a broken steering rack. Second round at Silverstone and his effort is in better shape. After claiming pole position, he's leading Gravit as we join the race midway through the second lap. Up to Chapel, building up to 150 miles an hour as they approach Stowe Corner. And it's four times British champion Andy Rouse leading. Leading Rob Gravit in the Australian built Sierra. And now this is Rob Gravit's car. 22 years old, Rob Gravit from Maidenhead. The winner and the lap record holder at Alton. Chasing Andy Rouse. Up towards Abbey. the race leader, Andy Rouse, Rob Gravitt looming up behind him, up to bridge, watch it, watch it go down through the gears, into the left-hander, and the gap between Andy Rouse in first place and Graham Goode in fifth position is a mere four seconds. In car with Rob Gravitt, through the chicane, 100 miles an hour, down the start and finish straight, up towards Cops. Lap three is one-fifth distance. Here come the leaders. Rouse, Gravitt, the Labatt twins, Harvey and Bristow. There they go. Graham Good in fifth position. Dave Brody well up. Now to pick it again. The slowest corner on the course, but it's still very, very quick. Tight into the apex. Rob Gravitt is closing up on Andy Rouse's Sierra. Wide into chapel, cut across, down the hangar straight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars burst out of chapel curve, and six seconds cover the top seven as the leaders, Rouse and Gravit, go into snow. And now we're in car with James Weaver. This is the battle for the B-class leadership. And Weaver has just taken it from Frank Sittner, who goes through and retakes it. 320 horsepower, 2.3 litre BMW M3s, and up front, the 1988 champion from Nottingham, Frank Sittler. Round the right-hander, Sittler ahead, then it's Weaver, then it is Godfrey Hall. Second in the class in 1988, and James Weaver is really harrying Sittler. Sittler can see the BMW in his mirror, Weaver coming up on the left as they approach the left-hander at bridge. And Weaver is through. Weaver is leading Class B. Into the left, into the right. Accelerating away, up towards the chicane. And there are the three Class B leaders. First is Weaver. Second is Sittler. And third in the black M3 is Godfrey Hall. Up to Cops. comes out from the slipstream of Weaver, he goes through on the inside, Frank Sittner retakes the class lead, down to second place goes Weaver. And Sittner seems to be going just as well without a spoiler, and the three BMWs are catching, catch Borna Bush's Sierra in front. Absolutely together, this is heroic stuff. 960 horsepower there, need to chapel again, down the hangar straight again. BMW Finance, it says there. They're going to need some of that for Frank's new spoiler. And Weaver takes Sittner. No, he doesn't. Sittner's got the inside line down to Stowe. Weaver's going to have to go wide. Sittner keeps in tight and keeps the class lead. So it's still and There's somebody off. That's John Clark out. And he's obviously hit something, and he's obviously very unhappy. Now we're in car with Jerry Marnie, 11th place. Three Sierras ahead. Jones, Smith, and Van Cowan. And Jones spins. Carl Jones spins. He's stationary, and the BMW battle is approaching, and this is it. Sittner goes ahead of Weaver, and Jones rejoins right in front of the BMW. 
Sittner comes out of the corner first, then Weaver behind him. Jones has fallen into place between Weaver and Godfrey Hall. Out of the complex, over the line, and in this Class B Titanic scrap, it is still Sittner, Weaver, behind the yellow headlighted Ford Sierra is Godfrey Hall in third place in Class B. What a fabulous scrap this is. This is the car that's won the European Championship for the last two years. And look at the difference at the front of these two white BMWs. Sittner, no spoiler, Weaver has got one. Now, it must make a difference somewhere on the circuit that James Weaver has got better aerodynamics by virtue of the fact that he has got a spoiler. But up front there is Andy Rouse, leading Rob Previtt, number 21. You can see how close Rob is. He's not giving Andy any, any rest at all. And back at Stowe, it's still Sittner, Weaver. There's Jones in the Sierra. Behind him, Godfrey Hall. Absolutely on the ragged edge, drifting out over the rumble bars. Now we're with Weaver, approaching Abbey. He's closing up on Sydney. He's going to come out of Abbey faster than Frank. He's got the momentum. He's pulling out. He's pulling ahead. Weaver is ahead. But Frank Sittner is not giving up. He is fighting on. Look at him. Number 33. Nothing in it. Out of the chicane. Down the straight, into cops yet again. Weaver, Sittler. Carl Jones still can't get past them in the 500 horsepower Ford Sierra. And Rob Gravitt is fighting too, still with the race leader, number one, Andy Rouse, as they lap the Class D 1600cc Toyota Corollas, and they are lapping nose to tail at some 108 miles an hour. Stab of flame as Gravitt overruns on the turbo. He's right in the slipstream of Andy Rouse now. Is he going to try and get through as they come up to Abbey? It's quite possible. Into bridge. Well, last year it was Andy Rouse all the way. Nine dominating wins from 12 races. But Rob Gravitz really making him work this year. Into the chicane. Out of it. They're lapping the Class D leader, Bill Dowsett, in the 1600cc Toyota Corolla. Cops. But behind them, approaching bridge, there's a solid watch of cars, and Carl Jones is ahead of the BMWs. There he is, but look at Sittner with the blue screen. He's through on the inside, he hits Weaver. He's onto the grass, and Weaver passes him, and Weaver is ahead again. But the way Frank is pushing, can he stay ahead? Well, into the chicane. Weaver ahead, Sittner second. with the BRDC sports car champion Tim Harvey, third in the Sierra, down hanger. Lawrence Bristow is right behind him. And a great wrench at the wheel by Tim Harvey. Bristow through on the inside into third position. Out of Stowe, that's the trouble. Tim Harvey has got a puncture in the left rear and more M3 action. That is the ex-Saab champion, John Llewellyn. He's lost it, he's recovering, accelerating away. Lost places there, of course, and here's Andy. Cool, calm, and still leading in the 500 horsepower, turbocharged, two-litre Ford Sierra. But behind him, there is a new lap record, Rob Gravett, at 108.21 miles an hour. And lap 10 is two-thirds race distance. Rouse, Gravett, Bristow, Good, Hodges, Brody. Into the pits comes last year's Silverstone winner Jerry Marney from 10th position, slowly crawling in. And here's Tim Harvey limping in to get that left rear changed.
So, what's the trouble, Jerry Marnie? The communication system's gone completely dead. Um, they're just trying to fix it now, but uh, looks like it's fairly terminal. Well, it's all happening. Tony Crutchington's got a smoky old problem with the Toyota there. And coming up fast behind him are battling BMWs. Crutchington moves across. He's going to go onto the grass. No, he's not. He's going to go onto the circuit. What is he doing? Past him. Past him go the BMWs. Weaver ahead. Now, 1988 British champion Frank Sittler won 11 out of 12 class victories last year and the championship. But the talented James Weaver, and this is him, beat him at Alton Park, and it looks as though he's going to beat him again. Down a gear. Bang! Sittner's hit him up the back. Look! Out of chapel. Well, Sittner really is pushing hard. Not content to sit behind his boot lid, he's trying to open it. Down the hangar straight. And Sittner seems to be prepared to drive over the top of Weaver if he has to. He's swarming all over the car in front. And it frankly amazes me that Sittner's able to go so quickly without that spoiler, because Silverstone is a quick circuit where you need all the aerodynamic help you can get. And it's Class B, Weaver leading, 33 Sittner in second place. Weaver approaching Abbey now at about 140 miles an hour. This is what he sees. And as they come up to the left-hander of Bridge, incredible! Sittner is trying to pass there. Right up on his side, he pushes Weaver onto the grass. He literally smashes his way past. But look at that smoke. That'll be the tar grinding against the BMW bodywork. Can it last? Here's how Weaver sees it. Into the left-hander and crump onto the gravel bed. There goes Frank on the left. Well, this is more like stock car racing than touring car racing. And it's almost the end of the race. In fact, here is Andy Rouse coming out of the chicane to win round two. And Rob Gravit takes second place. But who's going to win the BMW brawl? It's Frank Sittner ahead, but 32 Weaver is closing and smoking too, like Sittner. Down to Stowe Corner. They're coming up to pass one of the amazing Vauxhall Astros, which are pulverizing Class C. This is the last lap for Sittner, leading Class B. Weaver with the red headlights in second place, number 32. And it looks as though Sittner's aggression is going to pay off. But is it? As they approach club, James Weaver is closing. They're almost home now. They've only got to do Abbey, Bridge, the chicane, and that's the end of the race. And here's Weaver. He's going to take Sidner. He's closing all the time. Sidner goes into the left-hander and Abbey. He's lost it. He's off. Wow. That was undoubtedly a burst tyre. So James Weaver wins the class again. And and he deserves to. But I'll tell you this, there's going to be a brisk demand for BMW body parts tomorrow. Weaver comes home, but it's overall victory for Andy Rouse, with Rob Gravitt second, Bristo third, Good fourth, Brody fifth, and Chris Hodgett sixth. But what did James Weaver think about his hell on wheels? You know, Frank and I are obviously racing each other, but normally when you overtake somebody, get alongside going into the corner, and it's your corner. But if you start trying to overtake halfway between the turning point and the apex, when it's not really your corner, of course, we're going to meet in the middle. And every time Frank thought he was anything like close enough, he'd just come down the inside and try and knock me off the road. And, you know, it's impossible to race against something like that. I mean, is that brain fade or aggression? Well, Frank's one of the most aggressive people I've ever raced against, but we're in the same team, and if you can't overtake me cleanly, I don't really think he should drive like that. With a couple of laps to go, I knew the only way to win that really was to take a pretty serious chance somewhere, preferably somewhere a bit slow, or the slower corners, uh, just to try and get through, which sort of worked, but James quite rightly closed the door quite firmly. We touched, I came off best of that. We both struggled around the last lap with tire smoke and anything else pouring off the car. As I turned into Abbey, with effectively two corners to go, the tire, left rear tire blew, well, the rest is fairly obvious. But spectacular competitions, things have changed little since last season. 
But what of the other joint championship leader after the first round, John Cleland in the 16-valve Astra GTE in Class C? Because of a wheel hub failure, he'd qualified last in class, but rapidly made up the ground off the start line. It takes him just the length of the straight to make short work of the Class D Toyotas, lasting past Phil Dowsett and Jeff Kimber-Smith. In his sights next, Mike Jordan's Class C Peugeot 309 GTI. He'd be passed him by maggots. Further on that first lap, down the hangar straight, and he waves the Class C leader, Alan Minshaw, in a Volkswagen Golf GTI out of the way. Last in class to first inside the first half lap. And Cleland wasn't stopping there. Pretty soon he was up among the Class A Sierras, like Dave Pinckney, and was equally ambitious, equally unforgiving. John Cleland on his way to an excellent 19th overall, and the championship lead on his own. Victory in Class D went to Phil Dowsett in the Toyota Corolla FX GT. We were travelling right up alongside the first round winner, Jeff Kimber-Smith, the early leader in Class D, battling with Tony Crudgington in the similar Corolla GT. But what Kimber-Smith is also battling is an engine that's on the point of giving out after just two laps. Crudgington pulls away and Phil Dowsett also gets past. So it's between Crudgington and Dowsett for the class points, a result that's decided at the end of the lap. Bill Dowsett, a man who came so close to the overall title last year, struggling to get a full season's deal together this year, lines his man up on the exit to Woodcut for a passing manoeuvre down the straight. Mike Jordan's Class C Peugeot in close attendance, but Phil Dowsett, the winner of Class D. The overall table after two rounds shows Cleland with two victories and two fastest laps, leading from Weaver, two victories and one fastest lap. But it's Weaver in the BMW, who's had by far the toughest class win at Silverstone. Almost at the end of the parade lap before the rolling start on Truxton's 2.4 mile lap. 34 starters, four classes, and up front, it's the Ford Sierra Cosworths of number one, Andy Rouse, and Tim Harvey, number seven. Over the line, and Lawrence Bristow comes sprinting through from the fourth row, drops back as they go into the first right-hander, and it's Andy Rouse leading. Chris Hodgins in second place, Harvey with him, and Dave Brody up into fourth position. Up to the complex. And it's Andy Rouse, Chris Hodges in the Red Sierra in second place, and Brody challenging Harvey for third position. Now up to Seagrave, the fast right-hander, third gear, 80 miles an hour. No change at the front. Then on to Noble, the left-hander. And that's Andy Rouse. His car rocking on its suspension, full power. Behind Andy Rouse, it's still Chris Hodgins in second place. Then Harvey and Brody. Look for Dave Brody in the white Sierra. There he is with Rob Brevin, the winner at Alton Park, number 21, in fifth position. Now out of village, down to Church Corner, 130 miles an hour. It's Rouse leading, Hodgins up behind him. Then Harvey, Brody in the white Sierra, Rob Gravitt and Guy Edwards in the twin car to Andy Rouse's leading Sierra in sixth place. Through the chicane, it's Rouse leading, Chris Hodgins in second place, and then there's a three-second gap. Into Allard. with Hodgins tight up behind him. Into the chicane. This is the rest of the field coming through. The Toyota Corolla last, and he goes off. It's Leslie Lidyard going off in the Toyota Corolla, rejoining, and at the complex, Hodgins is giving Rouse a really hard time. Terrific scrap for third position. And Carl Jones nearly goes off, taking Newman. Now we're in car with the British champion, Frank Sidner. Now, do you remember Silverstone? Well, that's James Weaver's BMW in front again, so don't go away, folks. 140 miles an hour on the sweeping curves at Thruxton. James Weaver leads Class B, and number 33, Frank Sidner, is in 16th place behind 14 Sierras and one BMW. 
and at the club she came, second gear, 70 miles an hour, number one, Andy Rouse leads, just ahead of Hodgetts. Now the right tyres can win this race, and they're on a mixture of Pirellis, Dunlops and Yokohamas. And now we're in car with Guy Edwards in his Ford Sierra, over 500 horsepower. It'll do over 150 miles an hour. He is in sixth place. Ahead of him, Rod Kravitz. And ahead of him, Dave Brody and Tim Harvey. And watch the big white needle on the turbo gauge. Andy Rouse leads, edging away from Chris Hodgins. Absolutely flat out. Behind Hodgett, Brody is up into third position. Brody in the White Sierra is up into third ahead of Harvey Ford, Gravit fifth. And a terrific scrap between Edwards and Bristow. There they are for sixth position. And this is Guy Edwards, 140 miles an hour. He's catching Rob Gravit. Easing up alongside the red and white Sierra. He's going to take him in the chicane. No, he's not. Gravit moves across, takes the racing line, goes into the right, into the left. It's Hodgett second, Brody third, Harvey fourth, Gravit, Edwards, Bristow, and just five seconds covering the first seven. And Guy Edwards is going for fifth position inside Rob Gravit. Is he going to stay there? Yes, he is. He goes through. Guy Edwards moves up into fifth position. And Bristow is catching Rob Gravit. Look for Bristow in the blue Sierra. Up to the complex. Hodgins is second, Brody third, Harvey there he is fourth, then Guy Edwards, Gravit, Bristow, there's Edwards. And Guy Edwards, ex Grand Prix driver, is really motoring. Now he's after the Blue Sierra in front of him. Fourth place, Tim Harvey, with Brody and Hodgins ahead of Harvey. And at Village at 140 miles an hour, Dave Brody on the left is going to take second place, he's going to take Hodgins number 15. Dave Brody goes through, masterly bit of driving, and look, he is barely racing away from Chris Hodgins. Down to the chicane. And at the chicane, Tim Harvey is going past Chris Hodgins. Now, no disrespect to Brody and Harvey, but something must be wrong with Hodgins Sierra. And yes, it is. Edwards, Gravit, and Bristow are closing right up on Hodgins. So, on now, up to Allard. Guy Edwards pulls out. He's passing Hodgetts. Great drive by Guy Edwards, number 10. And at the complex, the order is Andy Rouse absolutely out on his own. Dave Brody is in second position, and there is Brody. Harvey is up into third place. Edwards is fourth. Hodgetts is down to fifth position in the Red Sierra. Then it's Bristow in sixth position and Rob Gravit in seventh place. In car now with Chris Hodgetts. Fifth position, Edwards ahead. And that's Bristow, Lawrence Bristow on the right, passing Hodgetts to take fifth position and Andy Rouse is slowing up. That is the race leader, he's been passed by Brody. Harvey and Edwards pass him. Oh my goodness, now there's Bristow going up to fourth. And in a moment, yes, Hodgins and Gravit go past fifth and sixth, and Andy Rouse is out of the race. So now, 44-year-old Dave Brody from Hurley, there he is, leads. He's won over 200 races in 26 years. And Harvey and Edwards, second and third, and Guy, we're with him now, is really on his way. Allard Corner, 100 miles an hour. He's catching the British sports car champion, Tim Harvey. Look at that turbo gauge. Into the complex, right up with Harvey. And Harvey's teammate, Lawrence Bristow, in the second Blue Sierra, is catching Guy. He's made a fine recovery after a jump start. And Andy Rouse abandons his Sierra. It's a very poor 1989 for Andy. But Dave Brody, who's concentrated on the handling of his car rather than speed, has got a nice cushion. There's the battle for second, third and fourth. Tim Harvey, Guy Edwards, Lawrence Bristow. In car with Edwards. He can see second place ahead. He's inching up on Harvey at the approach to the chicane. He's got the momentum. It's all going to be down to braking as they come into the chicane. Guy Edwards is going through. 
but he's lost it. Look at the steering wheel. Guy Edwards goes sideways. Harvey goes on. Bristow moves up into third position. Guy Edwards goes down to fourth, and that will surely have rooted his tyres. And now, number 10, Guy Edwards, down to fourth position, is chasing Lawrence Bristow. The class leading BMWs are at it again. Number 32, James Weaver, leads Class B. Just, he's just ahead of his teammate, Frank Sidner. They're 12th and 13th behind David Pinkney's Pink Sierra. At the complex, Silverstone ended in harsh words when Sidner ran Weaver, and he's very close to James again. This is going to be really something. Edging up to Weaver all the time. They've both got to take Pinkney's Sierra. And there's a resigned looking Chris Hodgins who could have won here just as he could have won at Silverstone. And it's obviously an engine problem that's taken the ever cheerful Chris out. The car was under steering very badly, and a lot of the cars came past. And what has happened is a hose has gone, and it was just putting water onto the left front tyre. So terminal understeer plus overheating. So live to fight another day. And there's a fighter in the third of these three cars. Championship leader John Cleland from Peebles in the astounding 220 horsepower Vauxhall Astra. 18th in the race, way ahead in his class and passing John Morris's BMW. And this is the car that's going to be very difficult to beat in the overall championship. It goes like smoke, and John won the brutal Thunder Saloons Championship three years running. But he's waving people through. He's waved the BMWs past. And I think I spoke too soon. He's slowing down. They're going past him all the time. Cleland looks in the mirror. He's obviously unhappy about something, the way he waves his hand. He's definitely going a lot slower. There's the problem, left front tyre punctured, and Cleland is coming into the pits to change it. Well, that's cruel luck, because he was leading his class easily, but it's still close between the BMWs in Class B. James Weaver still just ahead, up to Allard, 100 miles an hour. In car with Frank Sidner, the British champion of 1988. But James Weaver's won both the two races so far this year, and if he can stay ahead of Sittner, he'll be the overall championship leader. So, out of the complex, and Sittner comes up along the inside of Weaver, but you won't get through there, Frank, because Weaver's got the inside line on the right, and he keeps it, and he keeps the lead. On to Seagrave. Now to Noble, and we're in car with Cleland, and you can hear the tyre problem. the chicane as Cleland clears it, Tony Crudgerton spins and Crudgerton has already put up the fastest lap in Class D in his Toyota Corolla 96 miles an hour rejoins the race and Guy Edwards spins in fourth position and I suspect that his tyres are shot after that problem earlier on now, this is an in-car replay with Guy Edwards into the chicane Bristow and Harvey ahead out of it and Guy Edwards loses it full left lock but the back of the car spins round and that's the same place as Tony Crudgington lost it maybe there's oil on the circuit anyway Guy rejoins in eighth place onto the complex there he is trying to make up time and he's lost it again now that must be tires Guy Edwards rejoins the course well down the race now. He rejoins with Gravit and Walker and Jerry Marnie. Rob Gravit, Sean Walker and Jerry Marnie, and now Guy Edwards is with them. But ahead, it's really close at the front because there's only six seconds covering the first three. Dave Brody there leading. And there is Tim Harvey. Lawrence Bristow behind him. The teammates in second and third places really going well and smoke from Bristow's car he goes off over the grass is he going to hit the barrier no 
Lawrence Bristow, and I suspect because there's been a lot of tyre problems that he's had one too. Anyway, Bristow looks perfectly all right. And Brody is now coming through. Let's see where Harvey is. Look for the Blue Sierra. There it is in the background. And the gap between Brody in the lead and Harvey second, there's Brody, is four seconds over the line. Dave Brody, number 19, he's raced all over the world, Macau, South America, the Caribbean, and now he's looking a certain winner here at Thruxton. And with Bristow out, Dave Brody leading and Harvey second, up into third place has come Carl Jones, followed by Mike Newman, Sean Walker in fifth position, and Rob Gravitz sixth. Here's the BMW Brawl in Class B. Weaver, number 32, still leaving. Sidner right behind him. Out of the chicane. 70 miles an hour. Up towards Allard. Now, can Frank Sidner do anything about catching and passing James Weaver? Let's look back from Weaver's BMW at Frank Sidner. Fearless Frank is charging. New class lap record, 101.1 miles an hour. And it's brought him right up to the boot lid of Weaver's BMW. And Frank's in the spare car. He rolled his race car at over 100 miles an hour in practice. So this is a really terrific drive. Frank drops back a bit there, but no doubt he'll be right up with us soon. He's closing on the right-hander. Now they're going to the fastest part of the course, nearly 140 miles an hour in these 2.3-litre, 320 horsepower, four-cylinder BMWs coming down to the chicane. They've got to go right down through the box into second gear, brake very hard indeed. Is Sidner going to try for it at the chicane? He'll have a job because Weaver's got the inside line, and that's the one that matters. Right. Left, Sittner can't get through there. Now out to complete another lap. Up to Allard. On come Weaver's brake lights, just a little dab. Up to the complex again. Campbell is the right-hander. Into the right-hander now. And there's a gap. And there's contact. Take that, James, and he almost spins. But Weaver still leads Class B. He's had a tremendous clout on the left-hand side of his car, and that's where he's sitting, and again, Sidner is trying. And this time he goes ahead, but not for long, because Weaver is back again into Noble at over 100 miles an hour. And here is a replay. Let's see what happened. Sidner tries to take Weaver on the inside, hits the BMW hard. Weaver recovers magnificently, gets back onto the racing line and holds the lead. And up ahead, Gravit and Marnie are battling for sixth position, and we are with Jerry Marnie. He's going for the place as they come up to the complex. He's through on the inside, Gravit on the left. Gravit retakes the lead because he's got the inside line at the left-hander. And he'll keep it at the right-hander, or will he? Yes, just chops across the front of Marnie's car. And there's the BMWs again. Still Weaver ahead and a fine eighth position overall out of the complex. Continuing round the right-hander, which leads up to Noble at over 100 miles an hour. And you can see how close they are. They're accelerating hard, speeding up 125 miles an hour into the right-hander at Goodwood. That leads on to Church, where they're going even quicker, 135 miles an hour. And Frank Sidner is not giving up, and nor is James Weaver. Two very hard men, and they are both determined to win their class. Now, this is the really quick bit, and if Frank Sidner's got the momentum, he just might get through. And he looks as though he has. He's coming out of the slipstream of Weaver's car. But Weaver again has got the inside. You won't get through there, Frank. Will he? No, he won't. Weaver holds the line. Sidner has to go wide. Tuck in behind the white boot lid of Weaver's BMW. And once again, James is leading as he crosses the line. Brody ahead overall. Harvey, Jones, Newman, Walker and Kravitz is the order. Now, James Weaver has 19 points overall in the championship. Sidner that we're riding with has seven, and it's nine points for a class win. Up to the complex again. And 
Sidner's done it again. He pushes Weaver off and takes the lead. Now, was that fair or foul? Well, there'll be a tense atmosphere in the motorhome after that, no doubt about it, because Frank Sidner is well away now, and I don't think that Weaver's going to catch him. This is the last lap for Dave Brody. Almost home for a great win, his first since 1985, with a new lap record, 105.2 miles an hour, and that would make it three different winners in three races in the championship. Frank Sidner is undoubtedly going to win Class B. He's only got to complete the lap, but what about that passing manoeuvre? Well, you judge. Sidner tries to take Weaver on the inside. Weaver's got nowhere to go except off the course, but that gave Sidner the class victory. And here he is, almost home at the end of the lap. With James Weaver coming in second in the class B, there he is, 32, but Dave Brody's race with Tim Harvey in second position. And there's Dave, his distinctive black helmet. Great victory for him. Tim Harvey in second place and Carl Jones an excellent third in the Asquith Motorsport Sierra. Dave Brody then a surprise winner of round three and Rob Gravett coming in sixth to keep his lead in Class A. Class B, though, was Sittner's revenge on Weaver, but the manner of its execution prompted quite a debate. Once again, the crowd were enthralled, James Weaver slightly less so. But compared to what had happened at Silverstone the round before, Sittner was a lot more confident of his case. I've already heard uh, a suggestion from someone that it was not a legitimate move. Frankly, if you watch a Formula Ford or a Formula 3 race, you're going to see much worse moves than that. Feeling seem to be a little bit heated after Silverstone. Are they still well, a think, bit heated? I think, well, they're not for me, but they could be for other people. You know, I've apologised for Silverstone. You know, I was definitely out of order, and I went on record as saying I was. As far as this race was concerned, I was actually lapping usefully quicker than James. He was in a car that was difficult to handle. Mine was nice and easy. And somewhere or other, I deserve to get through. Frank and I sort out man to man. I don't need to sort of complain publicly about him, and I hope he wouldn't do the same about me, but um, certainly we'll have to go and have a chat together. Louise Aitken Walker wins Class C. John Cleland is probably having a quiet chat with his pit crew. The time lost by the championship leader when he punctured couldn't be regained, but it was still another good result for Vauxhall and the 16 valve Astra. Louise Aitken Walker winning the class and making the transition from rallying to racing. Well, it's a, a 30 minute sprint, you know, the car's all around you, it's a bit different from the trees, at least the trees don't move, the cars bump into you here. <laughs> Five runners also in Class D, led home by Phil Dowsett's Toyota Corolla GT, Tony Dolly in second. More useful points for Dowsett that put him in sight of John Cleland and James Weaver, who are now tied for the championship lead. Rob Gravett, the leading runner from a Class A that's produced three separate winners in three races. Nothing processional or predictable about this 1989 championship. So to Donington for round four, the traditional hour-long race with driver changes. Well, this is going to be different. 30 cars on their way to the rolling start on Donington's superb two-and-a-half-mile lap. With an hour to go, compulsory driver changes, and Rob Gravett, winner of round one, in his first pole position in the red-and-white Cartel Sierra, alongside Dave Brody, the Thruxton winner. Into the pit lane goes the pace car, and round four is go. And Rob Gravett fairly leaps into the lead, straight off into Redgate. Andy Rouse is going through on the inside of Dave Brody to take second position. Then it's Guy Edwards, Bristow, David Sears, Jerry Marnie, and now we're in car with Guy Edwards in fourth place. Immediately ahead of us, it's Andy Rouse. In front of him, Dave Brody, and leading is Rob Gravett going down into the old hairpin, and here he is. Right behind him, Brody and Rouse together. Guy Edwards, now the climb up to McLean's. Fourth gear, building up to 110 miles an hour. Look for Gravit, there he is out front. Brody behind him, Rouse immediately in front of us. Out of McLean's at about 100 miles an hour, and there's seven cars together. Gravit, Brody, Rouse, Edwards, Bristow, Sears, and Jerry Marnie in seventh place. Third gear down the straight at 125 miles an hour, 
Gravit leading. He's got a good lead now over Dave Brody. Rouse is dropping back. Edwards is catching the third position man, Andy Rouse. And David Sears is going through at the chicane and taking fifth position from Lawrence Bristow. Out of the chicane, down to Redgate again. And look at the lead that Gravit's got. Brody second, Russ and Edwards absolutely together, and Sears and Bristow there absolutely together, followed by Jerry Marnie in seventh place. Now, in car with Bristow, sixth position. And Andy Rouse on the left is slowing. Edwards and Sears passed him. And now Bristow's passed him up into fifth position. Andy Rouse down to sixth. And at the old hairpin, there are five Sierras. Edwards, Sears, Bristow, Rouse, Marnie. And Steve Soper here in the BMW M3 is leading Class B with a damaged wing. Let's see how it happens. On the left is Mike Smith and Carl Jones. Smith goes up to ninth, past Carl Jones, Dave Pinkney passes us on the left at 125 miles an hour. Down to the chicane, Pinkney passed Jones, Soper takes Jones, and there's contact between Pinkney and Smith, and Soper! Soper has hit Pinkney's car, and he's trying to tell us, waving his hand, he's chasing Mike Smith now. But back in the race of the chicane, Andy Rouse there, number one, is in trouble. The others are getting away, but Rouse is coming into the pit lane. And at Redgate, Gerrit Van Cowen and Mike Smith are battling for ninth position. Here they are, Van Cowen, number 25, Mike Smith, number 20. And there's contact, there's a nudge, and off goes Van Cowen into the sand trap. But he's kept the Sierra rolling, that's really difficult, and he gets a big round of applause from the crowd, he deserves it. Well done, Gerrit. In the pits, Andy Rouse, the winner of round two. Looks like an electrical problem. They're examining the plugs. Andy doesn't look at all happy. But he gets away. Sounding a bit rough. And now we're in car with Steve Soper. The right front wing is peeled right back and he's showing the pits with his hand as he goes past. And there's Dave Lapworth asking Charles Reynolds if he knows what's wrong. But now, let's have a look at it from Frank Sidner's point of view, following Soper. There's Soper in the white car, and he hits Dave Pinkney's car. Peels back the right wing, and now he's got a major problem. Is it going to affect the aerodynamics of his car? It looks all right on the left, but it's all wrong on the right. And number 70, Phil Dowsett is leading Class D. And there in the red and white Sierra, number 21 is race leader Rob Gravin. Look for Dave Brody now in the white Sierra behind him. There he is. Guy Edwards in third position. Right behind him is Sears in the blue car. And Lawrence Bristow is fifth, his teammate. And there is the leader, 21, Rob Gravin. Into the chicane. He's starting to lap people now. Dave Brody holding a strong second position. And now we are in car with Jerry Marnie. Sixth position down the street at 125 miles an hour. And that is steam. That is steam coming up from under the bonnet into the chicane. He nearly goes off. He's lost traction on the front wheels. There's a big problem there for Jerry Marnie. And how lucky for him. He comes straight into the pits. Now, let's see if we can sort out what the problem is. That's what the mechanics have got to do. Up will come the bonnet. There is steam coming out of everywhere, including the fascia vents. And I would imagine a hose has gone. Yes, it had. And now, back in the race, Rob Gravit leading. Brody, there's Guy Edwards in third position. Sears and Bristow. Don't drink and drive, that's good advice. And now, in car with Lawrence Bristow. And ahead of us, Bristow's teammate, David Sears, son of the ex-British saloon champion, Jack Sears. This is the fastest part of the course. Down the long straight, into the chicane, and Sears is getting it sideways. Sears goes off. Over the curbing, over the grass. Bristow goes through, up into fourth position. Well, there's a bit of bad luck for Sears. He's lost the place. Can he regain it? And Andy Rouse is back in the pits, a worried-looking Wynne Percy, his co-driver, alongside him. 
and Mike Smith, look for number 20, is now seven. There he is, he's Rob Gravitt's teammate, so his team are first and seventh. Down to the old hairpin, and Dave Brody has got a problem. That is the man who was in second position, number 19, Dave Brody, you can see what the problem is, punctured left rear tyre. Mike Smith and Sean Walker have passed him, there's Newman passed, and here is Mike Newman chasing Walker and Smith, number three, Mike Newman, and that's Louise Aitken Walker in the Vauxhall Astra, she's about to be lapped by Mike Smith, he's tucks in tight, he's onto the grass, he's going off the course, Mike Smith plunging across the infield at Donington. And Tom Wheatcroft doesn't like his grass cutter. Mike is going to be in trouble when he gets away. But he's rejoining the course, back onto the tarmac. Mike Smith well down now. Back he goes. And that is Mike Wiles, Smith's co-driver, talking to Jeff Allen, who's sharing with race leader Rob Gravitt, and that's Gravitt's pit signal. Rob Gravitt leads, Guy Edward second, Bristow third, Sears fourth, Walker fifth, and Steve Sofer is leading Class B in eighth position. And there is the BMW M3. Steve Sofer, last year he drove for the German Eggenberger team in the Sierra. He's got smoke pouring from the right front of the car where the wing is obviously damaging the tyre. He's driven in Escorts, in Minis, Fiestas, Metros, Rovers, Fords, and now the BMW. Coming down to the chicane at 70 miles an hour. Right, left. Change up, down towards Redgate. Approaching at 125 miles an hour. Chasing the Sierra ahead, which is Dave Pinkney in seventh position. And he's going to catch him soon, and look at that wing! Now, up to the Craner curves at 120 miles an hour, dropping downhill and accelerating. Up to the old hairpin, down into third gear, and he's going to take Pinkney before he gets there, and he does so. So, Steve Soper is up into seventh position. Of the hairpin now climbing towards McLean's past John Morris's VW Golf and now he's after Mike Newman Sierra which is in sixth position out of McLean's onto Coppice at 100 miles an hour and that wing still flapping alongside the door on the right hand side and Steve Soper not a bit ruffled and meantime, race leader Rob Gravitt is catching the two BMWs in front of him. That's Godfrey Hall and Ian Forrest and John Llewellyn. There is Godfrey Hall, number 43. Forrest behind him in the white BMW. There's Llewellyn. And Gravitt is behind Llewellyn. Coming up to pass him now. There's Guy Edwards. There is Bristow. Three and a half seconds between the first three. And Sears is in fourth place down the straight. And Forrest in the white BMW is all over Hall's car. Looking to the right, looking to the left as they come down to the chicane to see a way through, but there isn't one. And Rob Gravick coming up fast behind them. Down to Redgate. This is Rob Gravitt's opportunity to close the gap and lap the two BMWs and put them between him and the second and third men. That's Phil Dowsing coming out of the pits in the Toyota Corolla, down to Craner. Gravit is lapping Forrest. And Forrest nearly loses it. Locks up the right front, smoke pouring from the tar. Godfrey Hall is pulling away. In car now with Guy Edwards, second place ahead. Rob Gravit is being held up by the BMWs. He's past Forrest. Now Gravitt's got to try and take Hall, and Edwards has got to try and get past Forrest. That's the white car in front. And Gravitt is past Hall. Edwards is past Forrest. And Bristow is right behind Guy Edwards. What a terrific scrap for the first three places. In car with Bristow in third position, past Forrest. Edwards is past Hall. is Mike Smith. Now that is what I would call tit for tat. Off goes Mike Smith. Stationary, losing places. He's got to get the Sierra going again. 
And number 33 is Frank Sidner. The Chicane, Gravit, Edwards, Bristow, all together. Now, is anything going to happen on the run down to Redgate? Let's have a look. There's Gravit, Edwards, Bristow. 1.7 seconds covers the first three on lap 21. On to Craner. Now, this race could be won on the pit stops. It's that close at the front. Gravit, Edwards, Bristow, first, second, third, and there. Number seven, David Sears, is about to lap the two BMWs. Fourth position, up to McLean's. Gravit still leads. Number ten, Guy Edwards, there in second place. And Gravit has just put up the fastest lap so far. One minute, 44.9, 94.1 miles an hour. And there is Mike Newman in sixth position. But not anymore, not anymore. As I said, a gigantic explosion that looks like engine and Mike Newman is definitely out of the race. And into the pits comes Mike Smith to change over with Mike Wiles, his co-driver. Now, this is critical. If they're slow here, they'll lose time and they'll lose places and they've still got to do up the harness. Mike Smith helping Wiles. And Mike has certainly had an eventful race. spin because the Astra moved offline on me when I was lapping it and the other spin I'm going to talk to Mr. Van Cowan about down here at Redgate. I took him on the outside and he just bashed me in the back ring and knocked me off. Oh dear that sounds a heavy number but meantime here is Steve Soper leading the B class sixth overall. It's a left-hand drive car he's going to change over with James Weaver and meantime they're working on changing the tires and taking up that damaged front wing. Out goes James Weaver, driver change in the BMW, and at the chicane, Gravit is still out there, leading. There is Edwards in second position, and Bristow behind him third. Sears in the second Blue Sierra, fourth. And into the pits comes Bristow. Now he's going to change over with Tiff Needell in the orange helmet. Meantime, Sears has gone up into third position and there is no tyre change, you will note, on the Bristow car. Tiffany Dell, ex Grand Prix driver, into the Sierra, out of the pit lane, into the race. And that was a really slick pit stop. Excellent work. Tiffany Dell joins the track, back onto the circuit now. Bristow walks back to the pit, a job well done. And that's Tim Harvey waiting to relieve Sears. And Jeff Allen is ready there somewhere to take over from Rob Gravit. There he is, that's Jeff Allen. Hasn't driven for a while. And here's Rob Gravit, what a great drive. He's coming up to lap John Cleland, who's leading Class C in the Vauxhall Astra and is the overall championship leader. And past him he goes. Rob Gravit got a tremendous power advantage and we're in car with Guy Edwards in second place. There's Cleland ahead, but you remember Rob Gravit has just lapped, so Gravit is ahead of Cleland. And Edwards will want to get past Cleland immediately after the chicane and before Redgate. There's Edwards. And Gravit has stopped short of his pit. He's come in and he's stopped short. And Edwards is in. Edwards is in in the background. That should gain him a lot of time. And now Sears is in for Harvey to take over, for Tim Harvey in the yellow helmet to take over. Gravit is helping Alan with the belts. Very important. They've got to get properly tightened up. And out goes Tim Harvey. And that is Jeff Allen. He has taken over from Rob Gravit. And then it's Win Percy in place of Guy Edwards, and there is Tiffany Dell through in the lead as Harvey comes out of the pits in second place. Allen comes out in third place, and immediately behind him, Win Percy is fourth. So Tiffany Dell is looking good. In car with Win Percy, fourth position, Jeff Allen ahead, Craner curves. And from the Craner curves to the old hairpin. 
and Percy is catching Allen, no doubt about it. Damon Hill is right behind Percy. That is number five, and he has taken over from Sean Walker, and he's in fifth position. In car with Percy, fourth place, Allen ahead. Damon Hill is right behind, you can't see him, but win Percy can, and there is Hill. Up to McLean's. And Percy's losing it. No, he's not. Masterly recovery, but he's drifted out wide. He's lost time, and Damon Hill goes through. Damon Hill through into fourth position. Percy attacks. He's got the momentum. He's past Damon Hill. No, Hill is still ahead as they come down to the chicane. And Hill tucks in on the apex, maintains his place. Fourth place, win Percy, number 10 in fifth position. Down to Redgate. Jeff Allen, number 21, is in third place. That is Damon Hill, and number 10 there is Wynn Percy in fifth position. So, Hill is still in fourth place, and that is Tiffany Dell leading the race at the old hairpin. Lap 30, in car with Wynn Percy, fifth place, and he's losing it, he spins right round. Wynn Percy spins to a standstill, and that has really cost him. But he gets away well, into the pits, James Weaver. He's going to lose the B-class lead. And he says the car is jammed in sixth gear. Steve Soper's not happy. He built up the lead. And now James Weaver is saying, push me, I'm in sixth gear. I've got to get away from standstill. And he gets away in ninth position, down from sixth. 33 is leading the B-class, he is in 6th position. Two BMWs ahead, Jerry Marshall is in one of them. This is the ProDrive works car that we're riding with. Up to the VW in front. Right into it, left out of it. He gets a signal to pass on the left, and he passes on the left. Passes on the left, and now ahead, the Class D leader, Phil Dowsett's Toyota, disappears backwards. And at McLean's, the leaders are slicing through the field. Liddell leading, Harvey and Allum together. There they are. And Alum, number 21, is starting to attack. Tim Harvey's got on the inside of him. Harvey goes onto the grass, regains the circuit. And Alum is coming along the outside of the chicane. Harvey holds the inside line. Alum nearly hits him, keeps clear. There's Harvey, the blue car, pulling out and passing Mike Wiles. And now Alum passes Mike Wiles. Excellent driving through the field. And Damon Hill goes through in the black and white Sierra. Number 20, Mike Wilds is dropping back in car now with Win Percy in fifth position past Crudgington. Catching Mike Wilds, he spins! Mike Wilds spins! Sparks underneath, something jammed underneath the chassis. Now, Coppice Corner, Harvey, Alum, number 21, Damon Hill in fourth position, out of Coppice, and Alum is trying to pass it, he's passing Harvey. Alum going up into second position, and Mike Wilds there is out of the race. Now, let's see what caused it. We're with Win Percy. There is Mike Wilds ahead. The car does a complete spin, and obviously something jammed foul under the car and made him spin. And it's Starkey's. Damon Hill is up into third position. Number seven, Harvey, is down to fourth. Percy, number ten, is in fifth position. Damon Hill's driving a magnificent race. And this is the first touring car race he's driven in for a long time. In car with Wynn Percy. Harvey ahead. Hill ahead of him in third position. Down the straight. Harvey passes Hill up into third place. Tremendously close racing. Now the chicane. So Harvey is third, Hill is fourth, Percy where with him is fifth, and Hill, Damon Hill hits Harvey.
Hardy as they go out of the chicane. Percy is past Hill up into fourth position. And that is Tim Harvey ahead and out spins the O'Brien Donovan Sierra. Well, all action at Donington. Fortunately, all clear there. And now, Win Percy is really going for third position. Number 10, Win Percy pushing Tim Harvey. Number seven, very hard indeed. Out of McLean's, out of Coppice, in car with Percy, the ex-Jaguar works driver, multiple British champion. Ahead is Harvey, down to the chicane, the order is Needell Bristow car leading, Alan Gravitz second, Harvey and Sears third, and Percy and Edwards, there it is in fourth position. Redgate. Tim Harvey, the sports car champion, is really having a hard time with Percy big in his mirrors. They're coming up to lap Pierre Dieudon, the Belgian driver in the Fina Sierra, down to the Craner Curves. Harvey absolutely on the edge. Win Percy's going through. Win Percy goes through and takes that third position. Beautiful bit of driving. Now up to McLean's and Percy is pulling away. He's got the momentum. Terrific drive. Number seven, Tim Harvey back in fourth position. Well, never mind, Tim. Your team car is in the lead, and there it is. Last lap, Tim Needell is coming in to win with Lawrence Bristow, who is there in the pits waiting for Tim to come home. Into the chicane. A really fine drive by Tim Needell, one of Britain's best drivers, who's never really had the brakes his great talent deserves and just as well deserved a shared win for Lawrence Bristow, his first in the SO British Touring Car Championship, and I'm sure not his last, as Tiff triumphantly goes round his run-down lap. Excellent race, which wasn't quite over because Guy Edwards and Wynne Percy were disqualified from that third place, which moved Tim Harvey and David Sears into third and allowed Frank Sittner and Will Hoy into the top six. Edwards handing over to Percy instead of the nominated second driver, Johnny Dumfries, was deemed to be illegal. For the third time this season, John Cleland won Class C, and the 16 Valve Astras were once again dominant in this class. But initially for Cleland, he was put under a surprising amount of pressure from the Volkswagen of Barry Williams, partnering John Morris. But Cleland, who was partnered with Ian Flux, be looking nervously in his mirror for much longer. The golf fell by the wayside and Cleland was on his way to another class win which reinforced his position as championship leader. And Louise Aitken Walker's second position behind him reinforced Vauxhall's stranglehold on class C. Phil Dowsett was once again successful in Class D, that despite a poor pit stop with a lot of time being lost when a tyre change went wrong. It was Dowsett himself taking over for this second stint from Mark Goddard, and Dowsett was left with a full 45 seconds to make up on Tony Crudgington. He was gaining rapidly when Crudgington went out with a puncture. Dowsett well placed in the championship, but with a problem. The problem is we're out of finance, we won't be at flux unless something comes forward. Um, we've got to find some money now to continue. There's a lot of people pulling for us, but we need more finance now to carry on. The big budgets are all in Class A, and with Class A victory going to four different drivers in the first four races, it's left to John Cleland and the consistent 16-valve Vauxhall Astra to take a six-point lead in the championship. A view that betrays the airfield origins of the 2.3-mile Thruxton circuit, home of the British Automobile Racing Club. For the SO British Touring Car Championship, four rounds, four winners, but not the dominance of last year's Calibre Sierras. Guy Edwards has crashed in practice. He's out of the race. Bad luck continues for Andy Rouse's team. We had quite a, a bad race at Donington for a variety of reasons, and uh, we figured that was going to be the lowest point. And from here on, was, our luck was going to go up, you know. But... Uh, uh, practice has gone okay for my car, you know, on the front row, um, in with a good chance. So uh, hopefully we can do the business today, but it's unfortunate the guy's not going to be there to help me. Surprise winner of the last Thruxton round, Dave Brody, a driver without the big budget and big support of his rivals. A fact he's far from reluctant to emphasise. Well, these turkeys here are going to have to start get up early in the morning if they want to take me and my team on, right? 
They turn up with their big transporters and their good-looking motorhomes. They prance around the paddock all day long in their overalls, right? But when it comes to getting the business done, they're a bunch of wallies apart from Andy. Brody's much improved performance had led to protests from other teams that he was running on illegal fuel. He claims his advantage is not octane, but experience. 26 years of driving saloon cars, right? There's only one person in this paddock that's ever been in front of me, and that's Andy Rouse. The rest of them are a bunch of Group N drivers, right? And why should they be in front of me? They never did it before. Why should they do it now? I mean, Guy has had more spins and rock around the clock. Frank Sitton has had more rolls than Joe's Chilk Corner Cafe, right? And what sort of an example is that to set the public? I think it's diabolical. I've never seen driving, 26 years of running saloon cars, I've never seen such pitiful, ridiculous driving like it in my life. It's no good to us doing anything other than winning. I don't want a close second or a close third, but we come here to win. That's our business. So, things more than a little fired up for this fifth round of the championship, and Dave Brody is true to his word, having claimed pole position from the driver he admires. In fact, having qualified almost a second faster than Andy Rouse. Second row, Rob Gravitt, winner of the opening round, and Tim Harvey in the Labatt Sierra. Guy Edwards had qualified on the third row, but had no chance of making the race after his practice crash, but Mike Newman, he qualified well. Carl Jones and Graham Good make up the fourth row. Rows five and six, and behind them, James Weaver in the BMW M3 had qualified just ahead of his Class B rival Frank Sittner. John Cleland, the leading qualifier from Class C, Phil Dowsett in Class D. Round five of the SO British Touring Car Championship. Once again, we hear from Murray Walker. As Dave Brody in the white Sierra and Andy Rouse on the right follow the pace car round for the rolling start. It's really hot at Thruxton. 17 laps at over 100 miles an hour are going to be tough on the tyres. Brody won last time and Rouse the time before, but no one's won twice this year as off they go. Round five is go. And it's Andy Rouse leading. Brody going through though. Brody going through on the inside of the right-hander at Allard. Rouse hits the grass and hits Brody. But Brody weaving is really putting the power down. Into the right-hander at Campbell, the left-hander at Cobb. Now up to Seagrave. Brody, Rouse, Rabbit and Harvey. And now we're in car with Frank Sittner in the BMW. David Pinkney goes off. David Pinkney in the Ford Sierra Cosworth goes off comes from Harperton and he's really got a struggle on his hands now. He's got to get back into the race. Meantime, up at the front, there are six Sierra Cosworths. Dave Brody, Rouse, Gravitt, Harvey, Jones and Mike Newman. And the winners of the first three rounds are first, second and third. And Rob Gravitt and the red and white Sierra is challenging Andy Rouse for second place. Closing right up on him. A long drag for the chicane at over 150 miles an hour. Brody in front, Rouse closes up into the chicane. It's Brody, then Rouse, Gravitt, Harvey, Jones, Newman, absolutely together. Over the line. And look for Carl Jones there with the yellow headlamps. It's an amazing drive. In this morning's qualifying, he was harpooned by Guy Edwards and he's had to rebuild the car. There he is, up to the complex. Brody leading by one and a half seconds. Gravid is challenging Rouse for second place. Harvey, Ben Jones, Newman, and Jerry Marney in the White Sierra in seventh place. Now up to Seagrave, and Gravid is attacking again. Village, and Gravid is passing Rouse up into second place. Gravid goes through, Rouse goes down to third position. And there is Gravid ahead of Andy Rouse. Now, is he going to pull away? The cartel car has got terrific speed, but Rouse is fighting back. He's closing up on the rear wheel of Gravit Fourth Sierra Cosworth. He's responding down to the chicane. Brody leads, Gravit second, Rouse third, and Jones and Newman. Look, they are ahead of Harvey. End of the lap. Over the line. And Brody leads, Gravit second, Rouse third. Then it's Jones, Newman, Harvey. And the dust is kicked up. Now we're in car with Jerry Marney. Harvey ahead in sixth position. Down through the box into second gear for Campbell Corner. And now Cobb, the left-hander. Out of Cobb, the leaders go...